What's going on everybody? Welcome back. Thank you for watching. Today we're back with another completely pointless, irrelevant experiment that will probably never be useful in your everyday life. But uh, to be honest, these are by far the most fun videos to make. And sometimes you gotta just come out, shoot and have fun. And that's exactly what we're gonna do today. So this kind of reminds me of the scene from The Walking Dead where Negan's bat stopped a bullet. I believe it was a nine millimeter or something. And he held the bat up in front of his face right as they shot it. And it did in fact stop it. Now Demo Ranch exposed that a long time ago as being completely fake and obviously a wooden bat isn't going to stop a bullet but the other day i was roaming around in my garage and i came across this this is obviously a sledgehammer and it got me thinking i bet this would be far more capable of stopping a bullet and saving a life and today we're going to put that to the test and see if you were to hold up a sledgehammer right in front of your face as someone shot at you, uh, would it in fact save your life? So this seems like a video that Demo Ranch or Kentucky Ballistics has probably done five years ago. I don't really know. I haven't checked, but it hasn't been done on this channel and it hasn't been done for you guys. So today we're going to put it to the test and see how bulletproof a sledgehammer is. Let's do it. So my biggest concern was and still is that I'll probably knock the metal part off the handle before I actually penetrate all the way through it with a bullet. So I went ahead and bought the strong handle that they had instead of the wood and hopefully it'll last us a little bit longer so right now I have it turned sideways we're gonna try and shoot it that way first and then if we get through that then maybe we'll turn it long ways and see if we can get through it that way I don't have like 50 BMGs and stuff like that so we're not gonna do any of that uh, but we do have some rifles out here and hopefully we can get through it I have no idea how strong they are or what they're made out of I'm just a dummy out here experimenting so first step we are gonna start with the nine millimeter. This is obviously just a full metal jacket ball round out of the full size Glock 17. To be honest, I'm a little worried about ricochets. I'm back probably 10, 15 yards. And if we need to, we'll hide behind a tree or something. But this is a long shot for a handgun on a really small target. So might take me a couple. Nailed it. Let's check it out. And there's our mark from the nine millimeter. And as you can see, it didn't even put a dent in that thing. There's obviously a mark. You can see where I hit it, um, but didn't even scratch the surface. So this is gonna be pretty tough to get through. <laughs> so I got a feeling we're gonna have to shoot that thing several times in the exact same spot with a powerful rifle to even think about getting through it. But next up, we're gonna try the 40 Smith and Wesson. This is the Federal Punch and we're shooting it out of the Glock micro conversion kit. I highly doubt this is gonna do any different than the nine, but let's see. So that one's going really low. I just hit the handle and blew some of the stuff out of that. <laughs> Try it again and aim high. Smoked it. So those are the first two that I shot. The first one I just thought that I flinched and drove the gun down and then I shot again and it hit in the exact same spot. So that sight's obviously hitting low at that range, but you can see we did hit it with the third one and it did nothing. So I brought out some other pistols, but they're not gonna do any different. So we're gonna go ahead and skip straight to the rifles. This is the AK-47 shooting the 762 by 39 full metal jacket and I did move over here so I can kind of hide behind this tree because I'm a little nervous with the rifles about ricochets so plus it gives me a good way to steady the rifle now this is probably going to go low too so I think we hit in the exact same spot as the nine millimeter <laughs> let's try to hit it again Hide over bore is a real thing at this close range. I don't shoot rifles up close very often. It's easy to forget that, but you can see where our 762 by 39 hit right in the same spot as our nine millimeter. I saw the second one that I shot hit it as well. Maybe it hit in the exact same spot. It's kind of hard telling, but it definitely put a small dent in that sledgehammer. Nowhere near as deep of a dent as I thought it would. We might not get through this thing. All right, next up, we have the 350 Legend, courtesy of Turtle Lake Tactical. I wanna thank them, as always, for sending this gun out for us to shoot. Uh, go check out their website. If you haven't seen my last video on this, definitely go check it out. This is a really cool gun and a really unique caliber. So the round we're gonna shoot is a 150 grain extreme point. 
is what they call it. And you can see that black tip. I just assume it's some kind of ballistic tip. It's going about 2,400 feet per second. So similar to the AK, but coming out of a much longer AR barrel. Let's see how it does. Oh yeah. All right, so our 350 Legend hit right there, just below the AK, and you can see, didn't do nearly as much damage as our 7.62 did. It looks more like a pistol round, and it kind of just scratched the surface, whereas a 7.62 by 39 actually dented that thing a little bit. Interesting. All right, now we're moving on to the AR-15. Now, this is a smaller caliber than the last two that we shot, but it's going much faster, and with stuff like this, they say speed is what kills, so we're gonna try some different 5.56s. And if none of these even come close, we probably ain't getting through this thing today. So first up, we're actually gonna start with a 5.56 tracer round and see what that does. Even though we're only 10 yards away, maybe it'll look cool. I think I hit it. I think I hit it too high though. Boy, who would have thought hitting targets up close would be so difficult? The problem is I'm right in between up close and far away, so the holdover is not what I'm used to. But we did hit this thing at least once. So you can see where our 5.56 hit that sledgehammer. It looks like it hit pretty close to the 7.62. Um, definitely a deeper dent than the 7.62, but pretty similar, nowhere near getting all the way through that thing. All right, next up, we have some green tip 5.56. These are steel core, hard barrier penetrators. So if anything is gonna get through it, it would be one of these. Let's see. Not even close. <laughs> All right, so we hit this thing pretty much all over it and you can see we had a few go low there and several right in the middle and really not much of a difference from the tracer. I would say it is a little deeper, did a little more damage, but not that big of a difference at all. So what I'm gonna do is turn this thing around this way and kind of take some shots at the front of it here and see if we can do any damage to the face of the hammer. So I would imagine it's probably harder on the front than it is on the sides, but I'm curious to see what these bullets do to it when we shoot it there. And we're shooting it with the same green tip, 5.56. I'm smoking that thing. Man. This is unbelievable. I expected it to obviously be tough and I figured it would be really hard to get through it, but I thought we would get a lot closer than this. I'm honestly shocked. So here's the front where we were just shooting that thing with those green tip 556s. And you can see it put little dents in there, but once again, not that much damage at all. And I would assume, like I said, that this part is probably harder than the side, both because that's obviously where you're gonna be striking stuff with it and because the dents on the side are definitely a little bit deeper than they are on the front. But man, this thing is bulletproof, that's for sure. All right, let's try one of our homemade incendiary 12 gauge shotgun slugs. Now obviously this is not gonna get through it, not even close, I'm not expecting it to, but these incendiary slugs are awesome and this sledgehammer is the perfect target. So if you haven't seen the video, basically uh, this is a hollow point shotgun slug that we filled with tannerite and capped off with a 22 blank. So when it hits the target, it detonates that rimfire 22, which then detonates the tannerite that's in the shotgun slug and basically makes it like an exploding shotgun round. Like I said, it's definitely not gonna get through or do too much damage, 
but we might get a little flash. If I can hit it, that's a tiny target for a shotgun, but. Smoked it. <laughs> Just found a piece of the human skull that we shot out here a couple weeks ago. Imagine if you were walking through the woods and you stumbled across that. <laughs> you would crap your pants. I can't believe I hit that on the first shot. I honestly expected to miss it a couple times, but you can see uh, that we definitely smoked that thing. Put a big old mark on it. It actually did dent it just a little bit right there. Um, and then obviously, put that big old burn on there. All right guys, well before we give up on this and move it to a later date, I got a couple more guns I wanna try and these are a little more powerful. So next up, we have the 762 by 54R. Powerful little round coming out of the Mosin Nagant with the bayonet deployed, of course. So let's see what it does. I'm definitely gonna use the tree as a shooting rest on this one. This gun is awesome, by the way. Gosh, dang. Well, that one didn't do much either. Next up, we have the eight millimeter Mauser. This is even more powerful. Let's see what it does. That one hit it, but it kind of skimmed the top. Let's try one more. Well, I completely laid it down that time, so I assume I hit it. <laughs> All right, well, our 762x54R hit right there. You can see that fresh mark. Probably the most solid part of the entire hammer, uh, but really didn't do much more damage than the 5.56 or the 762x39. And then our 8mm Mauser definitely has the best results so far. So the first one actually hit right there on the top and I knew that that wasn't a good enough hit so I brought it down and man that is an impressive impact right there. Definitely the deepest dent that we got so far even though it's not even close to going all the way through but it actually spun the hammer completely around 180 degrees and it was laying up against the railroad ties when I came up here so I thought it just kind of laid it down but apparently it hit it spun it and then laid it down so that was an impressive impact but still not even close man I gotta say guys I'm really impressed with this sledgehammer like I said I knew it would be tough but I never expected those 556 five, green tips to barely even scratch the surface like that so we're gonna have to call it a day come back out here in a few months or a year or whenever I can get some you know bigger rifles like a 50 BMG maybe a 338 or something like that that's got a lot more penetrating power um, and we'll revisit this topic whenever I can you know make the appropriate video because I don't have anything that's going to get through that uh, not even close I do have some bigger guns in the house, but nothing that's gonna, you know, make that much of a difference. We got like a 30-30 and, you know, some hunting rifles and stuff like that, but if that 5.56 green tip isn't even, you know, barely scratching the surface, then nothing that I have in the safe is gonna come close to getting through that. So hopefully one day very soon we have a 50 BMG and, you know, other big powerful rifles so that we can do these types of videos correctly. But for now, uh, we're gonna have to put this one on the shelf and revisit it at a later date. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video either way. If you did, let me know down in the comments below. Let me know what calibers you would like to see me shoot at this thing that when we do bring it back out and like I said hopefully it's sooner rather than later but I think it's safe to say that a sledgehammer is pretty dang bulletproof and will probably stop most bullets that you're ever going to come in contact with so wow but I hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did please hit that like button for me guys I'd really appreciate it thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time and by the way my slow-mo camera took a shrapnel impact right next to the lens that kind of sucks